Next we're going to talk about um, the equations for simple harmonic motion. Um, we're going to start with the positional equation and then from there we're going to derive the uh, velocity and the acceleration equation. But I'm starting with the positional equation, so there I have my positional definition up there. I'm also have annual angular frequency. Okay, Angular frequency um, because it's a critical part of this equation. Now why angular frequency and not linear frequency? I'll talk about that when we're talking about the equation itself. So first of all, when I was drawing this picture of simple harmonic motion, I had position, I had time, and I had an equation that looks something like that. Okay? Looked like a sine wave. So we're going to start with that. We're going to start with a sine wave. Okay? So one thing we know about sine waves is that sine waves are bound functions. They're functions that are bound between 1 and negative 1. There's no way that you get a sine wave that's going to be greater than 1 or negative one, or less than 1 unless I do a little bit of, if I bring in an amplitude. Um, we've talked about amplitude on the previous tapes. Um, remember amplitude is referring to position max. So we're just going to put it as position max into the equation. You should probably write that a little bigger so you can see that. Give me one sec. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in the frequency of the system. It's a natural frequency, but um, when we talk about the frequencies of functions, or we talk about the, the, the behavior of a sine wave, we tend to think of things that are in a circular motion and not in a linear motion. So when I'm bringing in the frequency for sine, I can't bring in the typical linear frequency, the oscillation of an object going up and down or in this direction. Instead, I have to bring in the angular frequency, things that are traveling in circles, things that are bringing in thetas, angles. Okay, So I'm going to bring in omega. Okay, Now that omega is the natural frequency of the system. Um, depending on what you're talking about, depending on whether it's a pendulum, depending on if it's a mass on a spring, depending on if it's a piston, that omega is going to be is going to change for both of those. Now omega is radians per second. I don't remember if I mentioned that before, but when we talk about omega, we're talking about radians per second. How many degrees in radians per second? Okay. But in order to take the operation sine. I need my function inside my sine theta to be unitless, to have nothing. Radians is not a problem. Radians really don't have a units associated with it. But radians per second does. So I need to multiply this natural frequency by units of seconds in order to get this down to zero. To, or not down to zero, but to have no units. So I'm going to multiply it by t. Okay. So if I have radians per second times seconds, I'm left with nothing other than radians. Okay, and radians are really not a unit, so I'm not all that worried about it. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I want to generalize this. I want this equation to work for all functions, whether it looks like this or whether it looks slightly different than this. So the last term I'm going to bring in is what's known as a phase shift. Okay, that's a phi made it a little bit big but that's okay that's a phase shift meaning that if I don't want a sine wave and I wanted my my system to start not at zero not at its equilibrium point not at basically the origin I wanted to start at the top of the wave I'm gonna have to include something that's gonna let me shift it to the top of the wave or to the bottom of the wave okay so or even halfway through I mean this phase shift allows me to talk about any point in that wave. I could start it at this point by simply shifting my graph over to something like this. And let me use a different color for that. I've got blue. Blue's pretty. So that phase shift allows me to shift it so that my function is like this, just a little bit out of skew with it. Okay. So whatever this value is, it allows me to shift my graph one way or another. Okay. Hence the name phase shift. Now this is all equal to position. 
That's the first equation for simple harmonic motion. X is equal to X max times sine omega t plus a phase shift. Okay? So, going over this again, this is final position. This is the location where the object is at some time. Okay? This right here is referring to the amplitude, X max. Is the amplitude of that wave at a given, or the amplitude of the wave, its maximum value from the equilibrium point, or from the origin if you want to think of it that way. This is just my operation, sine, that's creating my sine function. That gives me the location where that object is in that sine wave. Okay? Omega is the natural frequency. Now that natural frequency can be replaced with other terms depending on the situation. We're not going to quite talk about that right away. When we talk about springs, when we talk about pendulums, this omega has a particular value. Um, and because we want it to be unitless, because this is a radians per second, we need to get rid of that per second, so I'm multiplying it by t. And then I'm bringing in this phi, PHI, to bring in a phase shift that allows me to move this graph to any point, to shift it this way or that way. Okay? So this is the first equation of simple harmonic motion.